poverty in the Caribbean. First, I must look at a very important and popular social theorist who goes by the name of Bujubantan and in a famous piece he wrote called Circumstances. He said, Circumstances made me what I am. Was I born a violent man? Circumstances made me what I am. Everyone should know. Circumstances made me what I am. Was I born a violent man? Circumstances made me what I am. Everyone should know. Poverty in the Caribbean is rooted in our long history and deep history of colonialism and imperialism. A violence of the colonial systems and the violence of imperialism which was consequently also an expansion in the patriarchal project violence against women and other marginalized communities. Winton Melville recognized the social developments in the Caribbean however they identify some significant challenges that still continue to persist. In their book A New Perspective on Poverty in the Caribbean they looked at the growth in urban poverty, often associated with migration from rural areas and with feelings of economic insecurity and negative environmental impacts on health and safety. We have new forms of rural poverty, especially in countries affected by new and adverse global market arrangements. The impact of HIV AIDS particularly on the 20 to 34 age category, the rapid aging of the population accompanied by inadequate economic provision, the poverty associated with new forms of international migration, including the movement of political and economic refugees, the sudden and unpredictable nature of natural hazards. Are some of the forms of poverty, are these the only forms of poverty? Of course not. Are these new forms of poverty? Definitely not. Oftentimes we have silenced certain forms of poverty and these voices have come to the fore through new research and new methodologies to understand poverty in the Caribbean. Some new forces that accelerate the levels of poverty in the region are growing economic disparities within countries and communities, the reduced capacity of the state and also corruption, changes in personal consumption patterns. We have two food systems, indigenous food systems, which has some of its challenges, but we also have foreign food systems, which have accelerated some health problems. The emergence of new health issues, especially the HIV AIDS epidemic, the growing importance of personal and community security and safety issues. We still contend with domestic violence, violence against women, rape, the impacts of environmental degradation and environmental uncertainty on livelihoods. And a very important point that I think most of us can understand is the poverty created by the weakening of traditional institutions, in particular the extended family and its impacts on the most vulnerable, including single parent, female headed households and the elderly. So Melville and Wint were asking what is the minimum that households and communities need to have? They wrote access to basic social services, portable water, sanitation, health and education. I don't know how you feel about it but I think it's a tragic irony that so many persons in our island or respective islands don't have access to clean water seven days a week sometimes some persons only have it for two days a week some people have to pay by corrupt means for water and we live on territory surrounded by water this problem of access to land savings tools and equipment and other means of production security and safety including protection from economic shocks natural disasters and human sources of the impacts opportunities for the realization of self-dignity respect and self-esteem that is why the labor movement is so important and opportunities to participate in the development process development participatory development that experiment of democracy must be realized in the Caribbean to include the voices of people now we turn to Rex Nettlefall in his book 
that I love, that I think is a foundation text for all West Indian people, Inward Reach and Outward Stretch, in his essay, Caribbean Crisis and Challenges to the Year 2000. Open quote. There are no easy solutions to the immense development problems of Commonwealth Caribbean economics. Long-run development will depend more upon the sustained hard work, ingenuity, productivity, and thrift of individuals and enterprises within the framework of sensibly supportive government policies than upon any grandiose schemes or projects. The international environment, although providing sources of support and opportunities for growth, as well as constraints on the nature and pace of development, need not be the dominant influence." End quote. I like for us to look to the example of not just the Caribbean, but even neighboring territories such as Venezuela. In Hugo Chavez's 14 years, amidst some persistent challenges and political realities which we may not agree with, the access to clean water, the expansion of public transport, public education, access for persons to access higher education, microcredit financing for, for women, and agrarian reform has helped reduce the inequalities that exist in Venezuela and also the scale of poverty that they have experienced in the past.